one of the dangers here is not just Tories wanting a Tory-like history, historical story for, the, for this, this, these United Kingdoms, um, but actually anyone, whoever's in power, wanting their current political bias to inform how history is, is, is examined and taught and understood. Yeah. Uh, but what, what, it, the, the, the problem with this notion of, of doing Britain down is that at any given mm. point, there will be a different idea of what that means. At the moment, yes, slavery exactly. happens to be a hot topic. Maybe transphobia mm. happens to be a hot topic that will really get you know, get people on, yeah. on Twitter annoyed. In in 15 years time it may well be you know if we have a some some hyper left wing government who knows mm. it may well be that we're not allowed to to suggest that the that british history hasn't always been a a communist idyll you know um when that's obviously that's clearly horse horse excrement to say the least uh, it, we can't be histor historical in inquiry can't be bound by the the opinions and the whims of whoever happens to be in power in the day. Otherwise, it is simply propaganda. Awooga! Awooga! Stop press! Stop press, Mr. Brockman. Um... <laughs> Red lights flashing! Red alert! <laughs> uh, this, uh, uh, our lovely viewer may not know, um, but this is actually an unplanned, or oh, sorry, this 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 segment was not in the agenda for this month's watching brief, but we are inserting it uh, as of today, recording on the seventeenth of February, to cover developing news, news which has sort of grown out of the monster segment that we did in February's watching brief uh, on. The, the the context of the defunding of archaeology in the United Kingdom, um, because this, this is a related issue that we're undoubtedly going to have to comment on next month as well. But we wanted to give you a chance to digest and to understand what's happening uh, as it is happening, uh, and it can be some summarised really in the Belfast Telegraph's um, headline, drawing I think on the London-based Telegraph uh, for their uh, their article that states universities that stifle freedom of speech are to face fines according to uh, a report there's going to be a free speech champion uh, a role set up to work from the higher education um, regulator at the office for students <coughs> uh, how do we how <laughs> how do we expand on this without swearing Andy Right. I think we just have to be absolutely straightforward with, with where we are at the moment. Yes. Um, where we are at the moment is uh, against the background of the worst session in the industrial world, thanks to COVID and almost uh, record uh, deaths, thanks to COVID-19 and the unfolding of, shall we say, problems associated with Brexit. Mm -hmm. Um, the government has chosen this particular moment to launch uh, what it calls the War on Woke. Yes. Um, this builds on a, a, a right-wing trope that basically um, academia is full of uh, left-wing activists who want to block conservative thinking and, also, uh, and that uh, they also want to um, remove all trace of Britain's colonial past, in particular things like statues and monuments. Now, um, let me just, just, just be clear on something here. They want to remove all traces by examining those traces in microscopic detail. Is that is that what you're saying? Is let that what they're saying? <laughs> this is where this is where this is this is where they, this is... so they so they want they want to look at it, and that means that we're that we're erasing history. Okay, okay, fair enough, right? Um, you've 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 cut you, you've just cut to my chase about the internal contradictions in this. But yeah. basically, let, 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 let's start, let, let, let's go back to basics. Okay, as, as a Conservative Prime Minister once famously said, with disastrous political consequences. Mm. Um, basically, the Conservative manifesto that they put the election on in 2019 included a measure about ensuring free speech in higher education. Mm -hmm. Um, this played to that, that that idea that you know, academia is full of uh, left wing remainers, and well, and also um, at, that, at the time, I believe it was an idea that was being imported from the US. There was this notion that uh, that there were co college campuses where right wing speakers like say Shapiro and others weren't welcome on stage. Now, some of this was in, true. In, some in, of this in, was, indeed, was and the the, the the 
Yeah, so, and, some, and, and some the... of this was an, uh, an exaggeration of what was going on, but nonetheless, it played into this notion of a of a culture war, absolutely. a woke war. Yes, ab 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 absolutely. So yeah. Um, so the idea of the culture war, imports from the states, it's played. It's the Trump, Steve Bannon handbook basically for how to how to run a, 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 a political operation mm -hmm. um for the last few weeks um christopher hope who's the political editor of the sunday telegraph has been briefed articles by the department for culture media and sport and the secretary of state of that uh, oliver dowden where he's announcing that he's going to be conducting a war on woke in the heritage sector at the same time uh, Gavin Williamson, who is the Secretary of State for Education, has announced that there is going to be a, quote, free speech champion who's going to be attached to the Office for Students. Which actually um, our, which is our, a new prime, our Prime Minister yesterday was tweeting about this, wasn't he? Boris Johnson he was. himself, yes. So this, 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 this is a cabinet-wide uh, move that they're making, yes. Ab absolutely, and... Uh, the issue of history in particular is of particular interest to the uh, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, who's basically the government's fixer, who is currently is Michael Gove. Uh, Michael Gove, when he was Secretary of State for Education, was responsible for um, rebuilding the uh, national curriculum, uh, and, and in particular the section on history from the bottom up, basically. And so now, uh, instead of looking at themes, kids are given a chronological uh, view of, uh, quote, British history. Um, there which, are which, which, had, which had some interesting elements. I mean, for example, he introduced uh, prehistory pre mm. into the curriculum uh, at primary school level. And that actually, I think, was a very good idea uh, in terms of laying the, the context for what, what we call history. Um, so it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't all bad, but nonetheless, yeah, he has an interest in it as well. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, what we know about what's being proposed um, in a press release, uh, the uh, education department quoted Gavin Williamson as saying, quote, free speech underpins our democratic society and our universities have a long proud history of being a place where students and academics can express themselves freely, challenge views and cultivate an open mind. But I am deeply worried about the chilling effect on campuses of unacceptable silencing and censoring. That is why we must strengthen free speech in higher education by bolstering the existing legal duties and ensuring strong, robust action is taken if those are breached. What they're proposing, for example, is that if a speaker is invited to speak at a university or a lecturer is giving a course of lectures and they're, to use the jargon, no platformed by students, then the university and the students union can, can face fines and the academic concerned or the speaker concerned could claim compensation. Mm. Now, people have pointed out there's an immediate issue with this, which is, um, say, for example, um, uh, somebody in a university invites a known Holocaust denier to give a talk yeah. and quite understandably that's protested. Yes. What do you do? Or, um, or if a controversial speaker decides that they don't want to accept the rules of the house where they're speaking, for example, having a, a, a neutral adjudicator in the room yeah. in a debate, yeah. what do you do then if they if they stop exactly. complaining to the press? Now, yes. but, and, and if we just follow through with the Department for Education at the moment, because as I say, this is a two pronged issue. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the paper that was issued to go with this from the Department for Education draws heavily on a, on a couple of reports, in fact, by a right-wing think tank, which is very popular with the, with the government. It has almost like a sort of direct line to 10 Downing Street called the Policy Exchange. And um, there are their, their work has been quite heavily criticised. Jonathan Potter is writing in The Guardian, uh, said of the, um, of the Policy Exchange report, uh, both the report and its recommendations are laughable, but that doesn't mean we should, shouldn't take them seriously. Um, and in fact, one of the issues um, in the report, they quoted as uh, 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 an instance where uh, the um, academic and philosopher and art critic Jermaine Greer, uh, famous uh, for writing The Female Eunuch, uh, you know, pioneering feminist, um, was supposedly prevented from uh, speaking in Wales. Uh, at a university in Wales, um, because of her view, uh, she was seen as, uh, in, the, in the current jargon, transphobic. Mm -hmm. Now, it was very quickly pointed out that 
this event did not actually happen. Jermaine Greer did make the talk, did, did uh, make the talk, and in fact, uh, newspapers and other out media outlets that said that she'd been no platformed and hadn't been able to speak were forced to issue retractions. Mm -hmm. But the policy exchange were out there as originally written. Okay. So the the the, the underpinning of this is both partisan and questionable. Exaggerated. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, based on, if you were being really unkind, allegedly based on fake news. Yeah. Now the thing is, let, let's let's just be blunt here. First of all, uh, in, in response to or one of the comments on the uh, the monster section that we did this month, um, mm. uh, suggested that uh, we are stomping into or we are you know, meandering into politics because we have nothing better to do during a pandemic. Uh, I don't want to be talking about politics all the time. I really, really don't. But the problem is, is that politics is all too often uh, drawing on historical narratives, and in this instance, mm. stomping into heritage and cultural concerns. And therefore, yeah. we would be remiss to to not talk about it. You know, if if, mm. <laughs> if we just had our fingers in our ears on this, on this, we would be derelict. Uh, of 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 what we consider to be our duty in the in the form of the watching brief. The second yeah. thing to point out as well is that I've never been in any educational higher educational setting where there weren't uh, set spaces and 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 areas where almost anything could be discussed. I've had conversations, formal public conversations, in a room with other people about the merits of national socialism. Whether or not, for example, Hitler was onto something, fixing the pavements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, this stuff is not taboo, but it will be rejected. So if someone posits an idea, maybe slavery is a really good thing, and then it's it's discussed and it's rejected. You can't just keep coming back to the table and screaming about whether or not slavery was a good thing, because universities are in the business of manufa uh, manufacturing, making, creating, you know, <laughs> constructing, nurturing, nurturing better ideas, yeah. ever more productive notions. We're not in the yeah. business of of relitigating over and over and over again bad ideas particularly for example this this, this, this obviously has, has a a very obvious um uh characterization in the form of for example holocaust deniers or the david ikes of this world who want to talk about mm. nonsense in public and how and 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 sell their their you know their their vitamin shakes or whatever else on the back of it mm. universities and freedom of speech are interchangeable they absolutely are places where anything can be discussed but in my experience so far <laughs> you have to have evidence to back up your ideas if you keep on coming back to the table with the same idea there has to be a good reason for that conversation uh, and to, to simply repeat nonsense is not the business of universities now uh, that, I've, I've got that out, out of the way <laughs> now we can continue yeah. it just it just bothers me and and that and to be to be up on a personal level and this is a personal level i won't uh, i won't deny it um the picture that that that, that the belfast telegraph has gone with for gallon gavin williamson just makes me want to slap him to be honest he's he, he he is he is very irritating in this context because he doesn't seem to actually understand what it is that he's toying with when it comes to higher education and freedom of speech he's he's being pulled along by activists on the right uh, and also notably for example you, you shared a link with me we may well share it below i don't know if we want to give them too much too much oxygen but from the foxholes foxhole.news website rather um uh, with headlines along the lines of government launches war on woke to defend free speech and british heritage you know and this notion of I should, not I should, doing, we should just not doing that... down british british history yeah. he's being we pulled along put... by the nose anyway go on but we should just point out that Foxhole News is the um, social media outlet of the Brexit Party. Yes. Um, Nigel, Farage, Nigel Farage and his uh, acolytes. Yes. Um, so they've got form in this area. Um, I'd, I'd like to develop the conversation by bringing in the Department of Culture Media and or Digital Culture Media and Sport with ECMS, yes. um, Secretary of State Oliver Dowden. Um, because uh, simultaneously with 
Williamson's initiative. And I should just point out for our, our viewer, uh, the, the viewer that's still with us and doesn't think we're being too political, um, that um, but at the Williamson... very least that viewer can see that I'm irritated by having to be too political. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. Sake. Um, we, yeah. Anyway, we, 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 Williamson was voted um, by the conservative website, Conservative Home, the least effective cabinet minister. Um, <laughs> and that's in the context of, of your man who buys the ferry contract from the company that has no ferries. Well, for, actually, to be fair, Chris Grayling wasn't in the cabinet anymore when they did the survey. Oh, so, okay. okay, fair enough. Yeah, um, but no, I mean, w w Williamson has had a lot of problems um, over uh, alleged mishandling of uh, the uh, issues, COVID-related issues in education. Um, so he, you know, again, any distraction that he can throw, any chaff that he can throw up, is is um, probably quite welcome in political terms for him. Um, it plays well to the base, as we say these days. Um, Oliver Dowden is his background is as a policymaker and advisor to David Cameron and so on. Um, he is a very sharp political operator, mm -hmm. and again, he's playing to the base. Um, he's been briefing out articles to the Sunday Telegraph um, regularly over the last few months, and particularly since Christmas, um, we've been getting roughly one every two weeks. Um, this Sunday was the one you referred to earlier in your introduction, where um, he announced the war on woke that um, there will be action will be taken against public bodies or, or bodies in receipt of public funds, which do Britain down um, and are taken over by uh, minority political um, interests, as they would argue. Um, for some reason, and I can't think why. Um, there, there, you know, there's obviously no no reason at all why the Black Lives Matter movement should be singled out in this, but it has been also by Home Secretary Prince Patel. Um, and the upshot of this is that we've had a pre-announcement, um, and it is that Oliver Dowden will be convening a meeting of 25 leading heritage bodies, including the National Trust, the National Lottery Heritage Fund, and um, presumably organisations like Historic England, and so on. Um, and they will be instructed to defend British culture and history against, quote, a noisy minority of activists constantly trying to do Britain down. Now, again, you can immediately see the problem with this because it is a, uh, it follows on the, uh, an earlier announcement uh, after, in the aftermath of the Colston statue being toppled in Bristol, where the DCMS said that any museum body that again was in receipt of public funds uh, or overseen by the government um, would have to clear any comment it made on that issue with the DCMS before release and that their policies were expected to conform to the government's policy mm -hmm. which is to retain and explain mm -hmm. not remove for example statutes like Cecil Rose we talked about that in, 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 but, but, in watching but, brief but also at the same in, time is that not essentially what the policy is for most museums is to retain and explain or recontextualize or, the, or this kind of thing the toppling of the colson statue was a very particular incident and and, and it was in the context of a a a, 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 a mob protest essentially and, and, and i'm not saying that in terms of out of control or whatever it just means it, it was a large group of people who decided to chuck him in the in the water that wasn't a museum decision <laughs> you know, no one, no was... one, no one in local authority decided. Let's let's chuck him in the river or in the harbour. It, it, it... I think, yeah. Though, I think the problem with Colston was that it was a mass pop. Uh, it was a mass popular demonstration coming at the end of nearly forty years mm. of the of, of, of a, a large segment of the population of Bristol saying, actually, we don't want this guy up in a central place in Bristol representing us anymore because he was the head of a company that was responsible for enslaving hundreds of thousands of African people, men, yep. women, and children, yep. many of whom died horribly, mm -hmm. uh, or, hor uh, or and were appallingly treated. You know, yeah. so you know, it it it, it was um. It was a live issue, and it was one where the political process had almost run out, yeah. um, which is why it ended up in 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 in, in that particular incident. But that that has um, inflamed the issue. Coming 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 on top of um, the the um, the wider Black Lives Matter uh, protests, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously went worldwide, uh, having initially started in the United States after a number of uh, apparent, um, well, uh, put, put it kindly, uh, aggressive killings of 
black people by American police officers. Mm -hmm. um, you can see, okay, you can see how loaded, politically loaded this all is. But what, what Dowden has done is essentially um, instituted uh, what many people see as government overreach. Yeah, yeah. It's an ideological move into mm. academic freedom, into the freedom of institutions to decide what they want to study and what they want to look at in the past, and also to respond to the communities around them in a way which is yeah. useful to those communities. Um, once again, to return to this notion, I guess, in public life, as opposed to simply in, in the private edu uh, educational and debating spaces of universities, simply reiterating old stories about the past with no new information is not the job of historians or archaeologists. It is not what we're here to do. And yeah. uh, and to, to, to be moving now into a, into a, into a political area where, for example, as we were talking about in a previous segment, archaeology is being targeted for defunding, to move into a situation where uh, historians mm. and museums are being told, uh, at the very least, that they need to inform po politicians <laughs> what they're going to mm. say next, and to move into a space where those, pe those, those people are now calling institutions to a table like naughty children to say, how dare you talk about, no, sorry, how dare you examine our history in granular detail is yeah. an affront. And I make no apology for being, frankly, pissed off at this. This is just ridiculous. And I have a colleague, well, a friend and colleague, who is a physicist. And she takes mm -hmm. some interest in history and archaeology. Uh, and she noticed that my mood in the past few few days has been uh, slightly grim, to say the least. Uh, and and I, was, I explained to her what was going on. And she said, this is the equivalent of the government mandating that we... <laughs> that physicists, that is, uh, that, that we um, uh, go back to the geocentric model of the universe. This is this is this is the, this is the precisely the same as them going. Well, actually, we don't think that you should be telling people that the world or our country isn't the centre of the universe. So from now on, mm. that's what we're going to do. Forget Gal Galileo. Forget all this other stuff that's happening at the moment in space and and in in. Uh, in, 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 in outer space and probe and so on and so forth different technologies that are unfolding just adopt yeah. what we want you to do i uh, and yet at the same time that wouldn't happen in physics for some reason and it's not even mm. for some reason it's because history is by definition a politically loaded subject uh it because it's the story of who we are and who any group of people are and in this context who mm. a nation is politicians feel that they can that they can make pronouncements on the quality of the historical work that's being done it, 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 we, we, again, the, the crucial thing is that historians aren't in the business of making stuff up you know yeah. <laughs> it's it, if we just plucked something out of nowhere and said oh by the way turns out we're the bad guys then yes fine tell us off but we're not what, what historians have been doing is examining in more detail and more publicly, stuff that was already there to be found. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what, ne what, what next? Mm. How do we draw this segment to a close, looking forward to next month's watching brief? Okay. <laughs> um, we are where we are. Yeah. Williamson has made his proposals. Mm -hmm. We await the meeting that Dowden has called and any response to it. Now, there's been a lot of um, comments about this on the in the archaeological uh, social media and heritage social media some people saying this is a dog whistle we should just ignore it other people saying no if you ignore it you end up 20 years down the line or even sooner with a british arnon yeah um, you, you end up in yeah. v for vendetta exactly yeah. so uh, at the moment the debate is still being had conspicuously absent from the debate are any of the major uh, bodies who are, i think keeping their powder dry until they've actually heard what dowden's got to say now my, my own personal view is if they can't, you know, the, the 25 bodies who are invited should get together and say, you know, uh, Minister, it is not your business, so therefore we're not, we're, we, we regret we've got other business on that day. Mm. Or perhaps a more diplomatic way of approaching it would be to go listen to what Dowden says and then issue a one line statement afterwards, uh, 
signed up collectively saying uh, uh, we thank uh, we thank Mr. Dowden for inviting us to the meeting, the con and we we noted his comments. Hmm. You know, yes. Um, the worry is that by simply floating these ideas, it will already have a chilling effect in academia, in funding bodies. Um, in research uh, councils and so on, who will see the direction of travel of the government, will, will not want to antagonise the government, who in many cases directly or indirectly provides them with the cash that they work with, and therefore they will start to implement uh, in a self-censoring way. And we're all aware of, of, of self-censorship and how it can work. Um, so, and sometimes it's positive and most often it's not. Um, I would argue. So... Uh, that that's where we are at the moment. We're at the beginning of a very difficult period of time, I think, where there are some very difficult judgment calls to make. I'd, I'd just finish um, with a quote from uh, the political um, commentator Ian Dunt, who edits politics.co.uk, a very well-known um, commentator, uh, who's just written a book on, on, on liberalism, in fact. Um, and he, in an article that's just been published today, um, we'll link to it, um, again below the line uh, he makes allusions to for example what Viktor Orban is doing in Hungary in terms of absorbing um, in previously independent historical bodies into the body of his government um, and adopting um, for example in, in, in the Hungary the situation is um, blurring Hungary's role in the Holocaust I think in, a, in British terms it's about blurring Britain's role in in slavery and particularly slavery from uh, enslaving Africans in West Africa and taking them to British colonial possessions, particularly in the Caribbean. And what Dunt says is there's no defence for free speech to be found here. It is back on free speech made by right-wing culture warriors. Um, it consolidates the sense in left-wing circles that free speech is not a universal value. It's a Trojan horse for an attack by reactionaries. It denigrates and corrupts precisely the principle the government claims it wants to upheld uphold and he, he continues if ministers gave a damn they would butt out but they won't don't so they won't the real aim is a right-wing cultural attack which undermines freedom of speech they are as guilty as those online who try to silence their critics but they are more dangerous because they have executive power mm. boris johnson has a majority of 80 he can do what he likes yeah and and to be fair, it's worthwhile saying at this point as well, one of the dangers here is not just Tories wanting a Tory-like historical story for, the, for this, this, these United Kingdoms, um, but actually anyone, whoever's in power, wanting their current political bias to inform how history is, is, is examined and taught and understood. Yeah. Uh, what, what, it, the, the, the problem with this notion of, of doing Britain down is that at any given point, mm. there will be a different idea of what that means. At the moment, yes, slavery exactly. happens to be a hot topic. Maybe transphobia mm. happens to be a hot topic that will really get you know, get people on, yeah. on Twitter annoyed. In in 15 years' time, it may well be, you know, if we have a some, some hyper-left-wing government, who knows, mm. it may well be that we're not allowed to, to suggest that, that, that British history hasn't always been a, a communist idyll, you know, um, when that's obviously, that's clearly horse, horse excrement, to say the least. Yes. Uh, it, we can't be, histor historical in inquiry can't be bound by the, the opinions and the whims of whoever happens to be in power in the day. Otherwise, it is simply propaganda. And mm -hmm. I'm not in the business of producing propaganda. I'm not remotely interested in it. I'm interested in examining what the facts suggest about our past. And incidentally, as well, what I would say as, as well, to, 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 a final point on this for me, is that, that none of that is, is being... Uh, being anti-patriotic or patriotic i'm proud to be british and proud to be from wales i love where i'm from and my country and my histories in on these islands but that doesn't mean i don't want to know more about it and to put it into proper context mm. and to help people for example to understand yeah. maybe in my context maybe a welsh perspective on the union which hasn't mm. been roses all the way through and that's to put it mildly it, it's mm. not unpatriotic. It's not doing Britain down to look at our history. And, and, and to think so is very dangerous because the moment the, moment the, the political winds change, 
history therefore apparently has to change too and that's that's mm. that's literally george orwell <laughs> like, like 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 i hate it when people say that but that's literally 1984 it's mm. nonsense i would just I, yeah I, I mean i just um direct people to an old british folk song or english folk song in fact called the vicar of bray mm. okay um and uh l look at the the story that uh that puts forward I, th I mean i think you know historically um uh, sadly you know, the, the the lessons are that there will be colleagues who will play along with whatever the prevailing regime wants mm. because that keeps bread on the table mm. and in the most extreme cases keeps you alive mm. which is the case in you know, nazi germany and in mm. stalin's russia uh, obviously, we're a long way from that yet, but the, we're getting horribly... I, my, my own personal opinion and fear is that we're getting horribly close to the top of the slippery slope that heads there. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, um, uh, the, the, I made the reference to the island there, but very deliberately. I um, think there was some way of learning from things that happened in the past like that. Yeah, I wonder, you know, if... some, some subject that people go and study and think and look at evidence and write and discuss and hopefully not make yeah. the same mistakes again wouldn't that be amazing like that would be amazing it would it, it would be, it would be fantastic wouldn't it shall we shall we uh put us shall we shall, shall we hold it there and and see what happens and talk about it next watching brief because i suspect we're going to be talking about this for some time to come yeah let's do that let's do that